Hey everybody, what's going on? In this video, we're going to be doing another painting critique, going over some of my uh, favorite interior paintings. And I want to share uh, the winner of the offer from a couple videos ago, so stay tuned. Okay, to start off this uh, video, I want to share the winner from my painting offer from a couple of videos ago when I was out in the woods painting the trees. I'll put a, a link or a card up here in the corner and in the description and I'll post a little picture or photo of the painting. So uh, congratulations Susan L. And uh, I do plan on doing something like that again in the future. Not every video but depending on what I'm doing I'll uh, be looking forward to those and uh, let's continue on with today's topic. Okay, now on with the video of a painting critique using my interiors. Uh, I like to paint interiors because they're very similar to doing my urban paintings. I'm dividing up space and compositionally I can really divide it up quite nicely. And another reason I like them is because you have a good chance to really express a narrative for a story to put into the painting. So that's what I like about it also. And another nice factor about doing these sorts of things with the interiors is that I get to control the lighting to express that narrative. So that's all those elements together really make them quite interesting to do. Lately I have not done a lot of uh, interiors. I have back in the day a little bit several years ago so that's what we're going to look at today. And uh, let's get started. So this painting here is called Slow Drift it's from 2017. 16 by 20 oil on canvas. This depicts one of the motel rooms that uh, I worked at a couple years ago. I worked at the front desk and it was nice nice with that job because I got to you know work on some of my paintings. But uh, I've always was intrigued by the idea of the traveler and uh, in this particular motel I worked it wasn't a super high-end place so the melancholy kind of aspect to the palette really intrigues and lends its uh, lends its tone to the idea of the slow drift. Slow drift being people that are transient and, and just living in motels across the country. Sometimes on purpose, other times because they just don't have a place to land. And so I really like, again, the composition. Try to really play into that with this nice little L shape here. And then that chair sitting right on the intersection of those uh, two walls. And that's a really nice effect. And uh, little details with the little AC unit. And yeah, pretty happy with this one quite a bit. I worked from a photograph. So this PCS was created from a photo. I was not able to paint in one of the rooms. And it can be very difficult time constraints wise. Uh, so the owner was nice enough to let me take some pictures. I could see trying to do a whole series along these lines of the traveler kind of aspect to some interiors. I think it'd be interesting. Um, I kind of like the old, you know, they didn't have the highest end furniture sort of thing as some hotel rooms are too clean for me. And I like the disheveled uh, blanket on the bed. I felt that if I made it too smooth that it just probably wouldn't read right. So you can tell that that's the blanket on the corner of the bed. And then you got this really old TV over here. And we're going to zoom in so I can show you some of the uh, minor little details like the reflection in the window just a little bit of the bed across the way things like that I really like how the TV came out so let's uh, take a little closer pan and shot okay so here's a little close-up showing some of the uh, details I especially like the little sky the cooler bit on top of the AC unit coming from the back of the curtains there to me that's a really nice effect then you have some uh, Variation in the wall came out pretty nice, pretty happy with that. Then over here, the TV details, you can see a little reflection. And I like that little glint on the edge of the TV. I thought that's a nice touch. Just a little suggestive dresser action going on there. And I love how this came out too. Yeah. Overall, very, very happy with this piece, with the narrative behind it and and uh, the story that's told. So time to uh, move on to the next piece. Okay, this next one is called Journey. It's from 2008. It's a 9x12 oil on canvas, and it kind of still relates to uh, 
the idea of travel. So it's interesting from this being from 2008 and the one we just saw from 2017. I'll show you some uh, downfalls of this one in my opinion. Uh, at the time I thought, oh wow, I really like how this came out. But then we, you know, study it some more over time as we become better painters and you find out different things that you don't like about it. So let's do that with this one. So sorry if you might hear a little creaking in the background. My floors in the studio are old floors from 1890, so they creak a bit every now and then. So this is uh, represents my upstairs hallway in my house. I set up this little vignette of a little travel idea. And uh, this railing actually leads along to another doorway that goes up to my studio where we're at now. This is our guest room in there. And I have I had this old trenchy coat uh, for quite a few years. And I thought that'd make a nice little display because of the lamp that you can't see off scene casting this long shadow. And then with the suitcase to represent travel. Again, called the journey. And I just thought it was pretty interesting. And having a bit of a painting over here, maybe building into the narrative of uh, where are they going? What's going on? Are they coming? Going? Uh, that sort of thing. And I love the little bit that you can see of the bedroom in there. You wonder what's going on beyond. And uh, just having this little light switch, a little detail of domestic real life. Uh, the only thing that uh, I don't like is this railing in the end. I think it's too interruptive. I don't think you really needed it. And uh, I know kind of how to study a little more now on, on elements like that. But back then, uh, I thought it was a good idea. And I love how I scumbled over this working on canvas. Allows some scumbling in the door here. So it's just not plain white. And you kind of got a white on white with highlights. So let's still take a little closer look at this one. Okay, so I've tilted it forward just a bit. Because there's a little glare at the top of the painting. And as we pan in here... You can start to see a little detail. Got that suitcase, the jacket. Now let me get up close and uh, show you some details. Okay, starting in the bottom uh, left corner here, we have the suitcase. You can see the scumbling on the door. And notice on the left-hand side of the jacket how I have sh shape within shadow. It's just not a dark shadow. Of course, you got the trim of the door coming uh, forward at the viewer a little bit. So there's a little details to make your your uh, realism and your shadows Pretty nice and we're still getting glare off off the painting there. Sorry about that But I still even though I, I, I don't like the railing. I still am glad how I painted it I think it looks pretty good. It can seem a little complicated in, in this area because the bleak angle that we're viewing it, you don't see in between the spindles. I think if you had a, if you were going to leave it to have a little space, just a little bit, little slivers of like the you know, the yellowish wall behind, but still one of my favorites. Okay, before we move on to the next painting, I just want to share a little clip of what's coming up in the next video. I went to Moosehead Lake uh, for a couple days, uh, and I want to uh, get outside. Enjoy some fresh air. Super beautiful weather up there. I'm going to interject a clip to show you a little teaser of what uh, what to expect. And I got two little six by eights done, and pretty really, I'm really pretty happy with them. So this next one coming up is called the Red Chair. It's an 8x10 oil on panel from 2016. At that time I was painting with an artist friend and this is her studio and uh, it was just so interesting. Everywhere you look there seemed to be a little composition to paint. So we're going to uh, take a look at this one and uh, show you what I like. A lot, of, a lot of interesting texture in this one. So I am pretty happy with that and the composition again. The way the lines of the uh, floor are kind of uh, leading into the to the main subject so let's go over to the easel okay here we go like I said this was uh, my friends uh, at the time uh, her studio and uh, some of the elements I made up a little bit 
like the drawings on the like the started canvases here, little behind here. We'll pan in on details uh, like the others. And there's a little sketch laying on the floor here with a pencil. I mean, I just really like the little, again, the narrative story and uh, the light coming through from daylight. Nice subtle shadows coming across. Uh, there is one major flaw in hindsight. I wouldn't necessarily be worried about it, to tell you the truth. It really doesn't bother me. Only I probably would pick up on it. But I'll pause for a minute, minute and you take a look and see what you think. See if you notice anything odd. Do, 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 do. The Jeopardy theme song, right? Okay, now I'll tell you. Hold on. Okay, did you find it? It's the lines leading away from the floor to the back of the chair and the sidewall on the left-hand side. The converging lines in real life would not be, they'd be running into each other at an odd angle. So realistically, it's different that way. But I'm not like trying to like beat my paintings up, just so you know. But it's just one of those little things you notice after the fact sometimes, and it happens. Not much you can do. I still love this painting, and uh, I kind of, in hindsight, was thinking at the time of painting it, that I was more thinking of, like there's a Van Gogh painting of uh, his bedroom, and I'm not sure of the title, and some Gauguin painting, um, Gauguin, uh, Cezanne paintings that where you know the tabletops are tilted up towards the view at a weird angle but yet the fruit and stuff is painted realistically so I thought that was a very cool thing uh, to uh, play with a little bit pushing the realism with the accuracy of perspective and things and uh, I just think it's cool to, and this is why I like to look at my work and try to study it especially sometimes when I have to work around for a while and uh, I look at it as I've become a better painter so now let's get back to the painting. I'll show you the details up close of some of the textures and stuff that I really like in the piece. Okay, and you can see little tiny details like paint splatter on the floor, on the chair. Then I am especially happy with how I handled that radio. That looks cool. But you got the little painting stacked against the wall. I totally made those up. They were not there in the picture. I think I even added a couple canvases, big deal. And then down here, you have the little pencil with the little sketch laying on the floor. Yeah, this is uh, definitely one of my favorites, but as we pan out, you can see with the lines of the floor and the lines of the wall back there. But I think there's so much, uh, I wouldn't call it clutter, so, so many shapes in, that, in here that distracts you from that element. But uh, Okay, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. We still have a couple paintings to go through, and uh, there are some of the ones of my living room downstairs, and uh, we'll continue with that in a moment. But if you have any questions uh, so far, just drop them in the comments. Uh, as usual, these paintings are still available. If you are interested, just let me know. Okay, let's uh, got two 18 by 24s coming up. Okay, next one coming up is called The Red Pillow. It's uh, 24 by 18. And it's from 2008, and it is a photo I took of my living room here in my house. It doesn't look like this now. It's a, a different room now. But, uh, yeah, I was really happy with how this came out. The mood in the piece, that's one thing I like about painting the interior is you really have control over that mood. Okay, sorry if the angles of the painting seem a little at an odd thing. I'm trying to reduce the light reflecting off the varnish. And this is one reason I've gone to a matte varnish, and that's a whole nother chapter for a video. But uh, this is, like I said, Red Pillow 18 by 24 oil on canvas from 2008. It depicts a room in my house. And one of the things that attracted me to this setup, I staged a few things, obviously. The pillow. Uh, I mean, we always had pillows on the couch. But just try to make a nice little compositional thing, how it cuts into the shape of the table here, that corner popping up, breaking this plane, all little details like that. But I especially was intrigued to work on the reflection from the lamp here and the light glow off of the glass of the painting. And some people might say, oh, well, the glass isn't like a super clear reflection. That's because this is non-glare glass on, the, on that uh, piece of artwork. So things to think about. And I originally was going to have all this dark and because there's a window we have another window back here, and I just thought it'd be too disruptive for the size in that small shadow area. But I couldn't just leave it that way. I wanted to add some interest. 
uh, because I just thought it was too bland. So that's I added a doorway like there's another room, um, you know, because this could represent an exterior wall heading outside. And this is a wall coming uh, as the house is more like a L shape. Uh, doesn't really matter. Just a compositional kind of thing I did. And uh, again, add in a little bit of the silver lamp, the little bits of detail in that. Really happy with how that came out. And uh, how I got the saturation of the feeling of a light that's on. A few tiny minor uh, perspective things because you're really challenging some things here. But really tried to pay attention to certain ones. Uh, really, really like the strong composition again. This kind of uh, element and how this comes up. So the key that I know now is to take multiple exposures for if you're working from photos. Because if you don't do that, especially if it's a place where you can't get too often. This was my house, so it wasn't a big deal. But I, you know, you want to take pictures for the, the shadows, uh, exposure-wise, and exposures for the uh, highlights and the, the lit side of your objects if you're in a low light situation. And I mean, there's ways if you're really good at photography, which honestly I'm not, uh, to uh, get the perfect, you know, exposure. But that's how I like to do it. Uh, and then I make it a painting when I get back to the studio. So uh, things to think about. As usual, we'll take a look at the painting close up and look at the little details I was talking about with the uh, glass and the clock in this one. Okay, I'm going to have to do this handheld because of the height of the painting. It's a little trickier with the tripod, but one thing uh, that was difficult was the color of the furniture. You know, we're pretty earthy toned people, and but as of making a painting, you know, having contrast is a good thing. And when you start getting in low light situations, it can be a little difficult to add interest. You might have to fib a color or brighten up some saturation, and that's something to think about. But let's walk in. Again, I apologize for a creaky floor if you hear it, but got old floors up in this house. Okay, there's the lamp. Really happy how I handled that. And then up above we have the, look how suggestive that is. There's nothing there except the parts you need. And then over here, sorry for the shadow of the, there you go, you have the glass reflecting the light. And again, one thing, you know, I like canvas. But what happens to, for me personally, my own, see the curtain? You see how you can see the weave of the canvas? Because I don't apply my paint super thick back then, or even with this kind of subject. I can see doing a little bit more now, but if this was painted on panel, you'd have total control of build up textures. And uh, it can be a little, dis for me, I just, I find it a little distracting. But okay, let's go on to the other one. Okay, now with this last one coming up, but before that, you know, I'm not like just trying to do these videos to beat up my paintings and be nitpicky or anything, but these are things, you know, to think about as a painter, like I, I was just talking about the weave of the canvas, and that's something I'm a little more attentive to now, and uh, in some cases, like I'm, I can't remember that far back on this particular canvas, I might have gessoed it, um, it might be a store-bought one, I'm pretty... Sure, it's something I stretched. I like to stretch my own canvases. Uh, let me know if you want to see a video on that. Uh, but the canvas weave itself is, I don't know. I think if I added more gesso layers and sand it in between, I can really create my own custom uh, surface, which I, I prefer doing. So, uh, all right, let's take a look at the last one. Now, this next painting, last one we're going to see in this little critique, has special meaning. It really represents uh, the passing of my wife's father, uh, several years before, and I really missed the guy. I, I, he was kind of a uh, friendly guy, just uh, getting people close in a circle took him a lot of time to let people in, and I'm the same way, you know. He, he really takes me a while, and I was cracking that shell finally, and then he passed away, and uh, so he, he was a really cool guy, and I, I miss him a lot. I frequently think of him, and uh, so that's how this painting we're going to see uh, uh, came about. So let's go take a look. Okay, this one is called What Once Was, and it's 24 by 18 from 2008, oil on canvas. Again, depicts uh, one of the uh, living rooms of my house here. 
and uh, let's talk about the uh, painting and pan in and uh, tell you the story. Okay, first off, I want to uh, apologize for this little bit of glare. Uh, the studio lighting in this particular room is a little awkward and uh, I can't really lean the painting too far forward. What this represents, this little picture down here, just it's not exactly like him, like a little portrait. I mean, that's a small little space. It's just suggesting a portrait of someone, but it is uh, representing my wife's father, Bob. And it was taken on this, uh, I think it was called a Circadian, this little cruisy boat, maybe held 20 people that used to cruise Moosehead Lake. And we went on it a couple times when uh, we used to stay at his camp up at Moosehead. And uh, it was a good, it, it was a lot of fun to do that kind of trip. But that's where the photo was taken. And so we get this sort of passage of time feel with a photo of somebody and then the clock representing the passage of time. And in my mind, this from the light into the void, the void representing when you pass on to another life, whatever kind of life that is. Um, and that's how I kind of have this doorway, like going into the next step of, of someone's life after they live on, on the earth. And... Uh, we have a little landscape represented over here to suggest the Moosehead region because a little bit of water in there. And uh, I love how I handled the kind of moody shadows. I think that's a, especially with the clock, it really is a nice effect. I do like that idea. This one I, I spent a lot of time thinking about along the storyline. I mean, I always kind of have a little thread of something, but this one really, I kept thinking of little things to add and uh, it really helped me direct in the painting in terms of the how saturated I want something to be, even if in real life in the photo or whatever, it was a little different, thinking artistically of our, my message. And I was, that's what I, you know, I'm really happy about, kind of continuing that through the story all the way through the painting. It's important to really try to take the time to learn how to make a painting. You know, we all can go out there in plain air and, oh, look at the tree, sunlight on a tree and paint it. And that's a story. It could be a small story, but sometimes you're trying to push yourself and do something a little more, something a little more exotic or, or, or something, maybe out of your comfort zone, and really try to think about how you want to build on that. I myself recently, uh, last year, bought at an antiques place two animal skulls, a coyote and a beaver. So the plan is to uh, put those in a still life somehow. And I, I like the idea of painting flowers, but I'm not the kind of guy that's going to paint a bouquet. I just like the idea of the fragility of the organic matter. Couple that with the skulls. I think that'll be a really cool painting. And I'm, I'm starting to chew on the idea, and sometimes it takes me a while. It just happens. So let's uh, pan into some details. Okay, sorry for... Um, I'm leaning it forward to take care of that glare as much as I can. But we're going to just pan around to show you some of the detail. And how I handled that clock being suggestive. Again, really not much there, except a little glint off the brass type uh, circular part and uh, the uh, pendulum, I guess you call it. And I like that little, that's uh, one of my wife's uh, Fiesta wear faces to represent his daughter. And that represents Moosehead Lake, where he just loved that place. He loved coming from Connecticut in the summer. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video on painting critique number four, my interiors. I plan on doing another one on my boats and such, coastal sort of uh, subject matter. So be looking forward to that. But the next one coming up will be my Moosehead trip. It's going to be longer than normal video. And there's really no way to split it up in a couple parts. So I'm not really, the editing's going to be a whew, huge, huge thing. But uh, thanks for joining me for this uh, little episode. And if you were new watching for the first time, hope you, hope you liked what you saw. And I invite you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do so, hit that bell notification icon that you can then go into settings of that notification and click on see all posts so you don't miss any. And uh, that's it for now. Thanks for joining me. Bye.